your in-game settings are probably wrong. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up all of your in-game settings in one setting that's not in the game client to give you a leg up on the battlefield. Before we climb too deep into these settings, I wanted to let you guys know that I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday evening. So if any of these settings don't make sense to you, or if you have any additional questions about World Tanks in general, make sure you stop in and uh, say hello. We're gonna start with chat. Uh, most of this is probably not all that useful in game, but I would actually suggest leaving the chat with allies enabled. The reason I would suggest this is sometimes you do get useful information from your allies, such as, hey, I took a hit from this unspotted tank here. I use that quite often when I'm playing a game, I will ping a map location and say, this tank exists at this point. However, I would say if you find the chat too toxic and it takes away from your gameplay more than it helps, I would definitely disable chat with allies. I will be skipping sections that I don't think will influence your battles. However, I will say random battle types is totally personal preference. You should at least try each one of them and then decide for yourself which ones you want to keep on and which ones you want to turn off. Briefly want to talk about enable battle recordings. I usually have this set to all in case I need to reference a match. Sometimes it's helpful to review your own replays to find out where you made mistakes. And it's also helpful to have replay evidence in case somebody is abusing you with physics in the game. And you can report them to Wargaming and provide the replay as evidence. In the battle interface settings, I have show vehicle tier turned on. This shows you the vehicle tier in the player panel on the left and right hand side of your screen. It helps you identify uh, the threat levels of all the vehicles on the enemy team. I usually have the minimap transparency turned off. I have used it before in the past, but I've actually found, at least in my particular case for streaming, leaving it opaque and solid is a little bit easier on the encoding process. Enable optics effect in sniper mode. I have this turned off. You can see in the image that it adds a green tint. Show in post-mortem mode vehicle that destroyed your vehicle. Always nice to know who destroyed you. Can help you figure out how and why you might have died. Enable dynamic camera. I have this turned off. I will show you some video footage of what this looks like on and off. It basically shakes the camera when you run things over, um, such as terrain and obstacles, trees and that sort of thing. And it will also shake the camera when you are firing the gun. It throws off my aim quite a bit and I will move my mouse to try and compensate for it when I shouldn't be. So I have this setting turned off. Horizontal stabilization in sniper mode. I leave this turned on. Basically what this means is it keeps your uh, turret centered when you're turning the hull of your tank. Enable the time 16 and times 25 zoom. I have this turned off. And the reason is actually because I feel like when I can zoom in this deep, it gives me a false sense of accuracy when my gun just simply doesn't have the dispersion to zoom in this far. But there could be an argument to turn this on. I recommend experimenting and seeing how you like it. Restrict toggling the sniper mode to the shift key. I leave this off. I like to zoom in with my scroll wheel. That's also personal preference. Enable server reticle. I actually have this turned on when my mods are installed because I have both reticles on the screen with the mod. Without the mod, it turns your standard reticle into the server reticle, and it's simply too jittery for me to aim reliably. So I usually only turn this on when I have both available to me, which is only through a mod. Showing the vehicle markers on the battle score panel helps me look at the score panel and make an immediate assessment of what tanks are there. Display camera direction beam on minimap. I have this turned on. This will help you line up shots on tanks that are dark or have been dark or are outside of your render range. What you do is you line up that line of where your camera is, exactly where that tank was last spotted or where that tank is currently spotted but is outside your render range. And you try to guess the elevation and just fire blindly and hope you can pen them. Display arc of fire for SPG on minimap can be really helpful. You get a massive dispersion penalty when you turn the hull of your SPG. So what you want to do is use the arc of fire and center it on the area of engagement that you're trying to shoot on the minimap. And this will help you avoid unnecessary hull movement, 
which adds to the dispersion value of your gun. Display notifications when causing damage. This helps me know what I've hit and that I've successfully hit somebody. Display the speedometer of wheeled vehicles. This creates a big orange number in the center of your screen that displays how fast your wheeled vehicle is going. I find this very, very distracting while I'm playing that type of vehicle. And I also don't find it all that useful because knowing the speed of my vehicle is not usually relevant. Enable expanded minimap features. I leave this setting turned on and I will have a couple of images that show what that means. But basically it helps you see last tank spotted where they are and tank names. So when you look at the minimap, it's a lot easier to gauge where the threats are on the map and where you need to be to influence those threats. I always have the tips on battle loading screen and tips on the ranked battle loading screen set to the minimap so I can look over the minimap before I get into the match. It helps me get in the right state of mind of where I'm thinking I'm taking my vehicle before I can even look at the vehicle lineup. However, if you haven't read all those tips, you might want to keep those turned on. View range indicators on the minimap, I always, always, always have all of these checked. In fact, I wish there was an additional check box that gave you the draw circle for the minimum spot range on your tank. That's something that I add into my client using a modification. All right, moving on to the graphics settings. So I play the game in windowed borderless. This enables me to tab out of the game while I'm streaming and not have the game minimize. That's totally up to you and your preference. I do recommend setting the resolution of the game to the same resolution of your monitor. This helps prevent pixelation. On to the details. Before we get too deep into the detail settings here, I do want to point out there's kind of two different philosophies when it comes to how much detail you turn on and how much you turn off. There is one side of the spectrum of the most competitive players. What they do is they turn everything off as low as it'll go so that there is the least amount of clutter between their gun and the enemy tanks. I can totally understand this and empathize with it. Uh, a lot of little effects can come up that can throw off your aim when those little effects can be actually turned off by just setting the quality all the way down to the bottom. On top of that, setting the quality as low as possible also gives you the highest frame rate. Me personally, I really like how the game looks. I think it's a really beautiful game to play and I turn a lot of these settings all the way up, uh, but we'll go over some very specific settings now. I turn motion blur completely off. I have a really high refresh rate monitor and I find motion blur detracts from the monitor's ability to refresh so fast. So I leave this setting turned off. It also uses a lot of processing power. So turning it off will actually help your frame rate as well. Foliage transparency and grass and sniper mode. When we take a look at foliage transparency, this is a setting that I find I leave checked on. What this does is it makes a bush that's in front of you fully transparent when you're within 15 meters of it. And when you back up, it becomes fully opaque when you're beyond 15 meters of it. This helps you know whether that tree or bush or whatever vegetation is in front of you is providing you its camo bonus or not after firing. Any vehicle that is got a transparent bush in front of it in sniper mode will not get that bush's camouflage value added to it if they fire their gun. So using this transparency mode, it becomes very clear when you roll into a bush, it becomes transparent, you can spot through it, and you will lose the camel value if you fire. So you spot your enemy, you roll back just far enough, only far enough for it to become opaque. And then you take your shot or two shots or until the target goes dark. And then you roll forward again to respot your target. Next is grass and sniper mode. Uh, this I definitely always have turned off and I'll show two images right now. And it becomes pretty clear why I turn this off. Pretty much it helps me find where the terrain ends and an enemy tank begins. Without the setting turned on, you'll probably shoot a lot more shells into the dirt or miss completely. Uh, I definitely recommend turning grass off in sniper mode. Extra effects quality and the enhanced destruction physics. It's very, very common for people to turn that slider all the way off and uncheck this checkbox. And that's because when buildings become destroyed and the physics are on and your effects quality are all the way on, they crumble all over your vehicle. This looks really cool, 
but it impacts your gameplay and then it can be really difficult to aim at a tank that has just destroyed something because they're covered in debris. Another problem is that sometimes debris can get stuck on the gun and when you go into sniper mode all you see is a giant panel in front of your screen and you can't actually see what you're trying to shoot at. In my opinion recommended to turn these off. I will say that I leave them on with the understanding that I'm playing at a deficit and I do it on purpose because I really like the destruction physics and I like how pretty the buildings look when they fall apart. And one last thing I want to talk about at the top is 3D render resolution and the checkbox for dynamic adjustment. Basically every texture in the game has a resolution of an image and if you have this set to 100% it will use a lot of VRAM or video card memory. If you have very little video card memory I would recommend either turning on dynamic adjustment or moving this slider down. Basically what this means is textures that are further away will be rendered at a lower resolution if you have the dynamic adjustment turned on. Okay, let's talk about sound settings. Now, I actually have changed my sounds ever since I watched True Voodoo's video way back, I think it was May of last year. So I will link to that in the description. I recommend you actually go check out his video because he's also gonna point out something else that we'll be looking at later in the settings system. But essentially to boil down that video for you right now, he uses the sound effects of destroyed environment to detect vehicles beyond the 50 meter minimum detection range. So he did a few tests in a training room that basically he learned that a vehicle that's destroying objects that is within 100 meters, you can hear on your headset. So what he has done is he's turned down the vehicle's sound, the second one there, and basically that's the sound of your engine and its revolution, that kind of thing. That's your vehicle sounds. Um, he's turned down voice notifications, which is your commander feedback. He's turned effects way up so that he can then better hear the destruction of the environment around him. This also increases the sound of the cannons firing in the game which can help you identify which vehicle on the enemy team is fired. Many times you'll be sitting around a corner waiting for someone to be on reload, such as a T-124 in his uh, 155mm gun. You can very distinctly hear that fire, and when you know that he has fired, he's got a 16 second reload and you might have time to take a shot. So hearing and listening for high caliber guns can help you make really good choices in game. So I recommend keeping that effects turned way up. Ambiance, music in battle and music in garage. The ambiance are like birds chirping and leaves rustling. Helps you immerse into the map that you're in. Music in battle is the song that's played at the beginning of the match during the countdown timer and towards the middle or end of the match when things get intense, it ramps up the song again in a more dramatic sense. I like to leave it turned on. I think they do a great job with the music in battle. And then music in garage is of course the music here in garage. All three of those are personal preference and you can mess with those sliders uh, as you see fit. All right, onto the controls tab. Most of this will be personal preference. The one key I want to point out is the new fire salvo button. What happens in a double barrel tank is this is standard defaulted to the same as a single fire button. So when you click the single fire button, the game is waiting and listening to see if you're going to hold that button down for a fire salvo. And what happens is this causes a really weird lag between you clicking your mouse and then the gun actually firing. So to mitigate this lag, what you have to do is remap your fire salvo button to an alternate button. Hopefully you have all their buttons on your mouse. I have mine set to the middle mouse button. That's totally personal preference what you set it to, but I do recommend remapping this if you plan on playing the double barrel tanks. Okay, the next setting would be the mouse sensitivity. Now let's talk about mouse sensitivity really quick. One thing that a lot of people don't know is that there is this setting inside Windows called hardware acceleration or enhanced pointer precision. What this means is that on the bottom of your mouse, there's a little optical sensor that detects how far it's moved. Normally what happens when you slide the mouse a specific distance, the mouse on screen will move a specific distance. However, Windows in their infinite wisdom has decided to make that a variable distance based on how fast you're moving the mouse. 
So if you move the mouse the same distance, but move it faster, your mouse on screen will actually move even farther. This can really throw off split second reactions. So when you have gotten used to, when I move the mouse this far, then my pointer on screen moves this far. And if I move it even faster, but the same distance, it'll actually move on screen farther than it should. So what I highly recommend doing is going through this settings system on Windows to turn this off so that regardless of how fast you're moving your mouse, it's tracking the same distance every time and relaying that same distance on your screen. This can help you be a lot more consistent with your mouse movements. This is a setting that is really sensitive to a lot of fast twitch type FPS games. Uh, but I think that turning this setting off can really help you in World of Tanks. From your desktop, just type in mouse into the search bar, click on the mouse settings, go to additional mouse options. Under the mouse properties, you want to go to pointer options. And under here, you want to deselect enhanced pointer precision and click apply. So as we move into the reticle tab, there's really only two settings that I think are something that you want to make sure that you have turned on in your client specifically. And the first one is for the gun marker. It doesn't really matter which indicator you choose. My preference is the circle indicator, which is the aim point. But whichever one you choose, you want to choose the one that says with armor penetration indicator. This will show you a little colored uh, symbol, whichever symbol you choose which will tell you whether you can penetrate the effective armor thickness of the vehicle you're aiming at. If it's green, it means you can pen it. If it's yellow, it means it's a 50-50. And if it's red, it means you don't stand a chance of penetrating it. The second thing I want to point out is another little tip I learned from True Voodoo. Same video in the description below. Basically, it is the indicator, this one up here. So what this does is it sets the center of your reticle with a little diagonal indicator. So that's for your reload time. And then the one down here is your hit points. But what's important is having this vertical line right up here in the middle of your screen. Only the diagonal has the vertical line. But when you receive incoming fire, what you want to do is line up the battle notification of that incoming shot with the center of that top diagonal marker and that way you can zero in on exactly where the tank was that shot you, even though you can't see him. So this can help you get blind damage down range when you don't see the tank that is shooting at you. This is also why I run the mod that changes the crosshair to white. When the crosshair is white, it makes it infinitely easier to then line up those two hash marks. I will be doing another video that explains every single mod that I run and why I run that mod. So if you're interested in seeing that video, make sure uh, you subscribe to the channel, hit the little alert button, and uh, you know, give this video a like or uh, add a comment. If I miss something, or if, uh, if you have a suggestion of your own, put it in the comments. I'd be really interested to see what you guys have to say. All right, the next tab we're gonna look at are over target markers. And I'm gonna try and explain why I have mine set up the way that I do. I leave the vehicle icon turned off because I feel like that clutters up the screen just a little too much. I do like to see the tier of the vehicle and the name of the vehicle so that I can use that as a reference of what I'm up against and how hard it's going to be to battle a particular vehicle. I also make sure I leave the player's name off. I don't find the player's name that I'm fighting important in the heat of battle. I will say for player's name, we do turn this on during Clan Wars events because we use that information in the communications of our team to help focus fire on individual tanks to remove their gun from the game as quickly as possible. One thing I do want to make sure that I point out is the vehicle health indicator. You always want to make sure you set this to HP left or HP left out of total. The default is to set it as percent, and this is not helpful because if you have a certain alpha gun, so let's say you're, you've got a 390 alpha gun and you're coming up against another vehicle and it has a percent left, how do you know if 20% will kill him or not? You need to have the vehicle health indicator with HP left to let you know how many shots of your gun on average it will take to eliminate an enemy vehicle. It can help you then plan your trades better. 
So when it comes to the other over target marker tabs, I have them set up pretty much identically to the enemy team so that it's all consistent between whether the tank is on my team, an enemy team, or destroyed. Debatably, you could remove a lot of these markers from destroyed vehicles to clear out the clutter on your display, uh, but I like to have all of these turned on and identical so there's a little bit of consistency during a match. All right, let's get over to battle notifications. So the fire direction indicator, I have it set to advance and I turn pretty much everything on. I think all of this information can be extremely useful. It can help you identify which vehicle is shooting at you, where it's shooting from. And I also have the friendly fire indicator turned on because I need to know if I'm blocking an ally's shots. One thing I also wanna make sure that you do is turn on the dynamic indicators which basically makes the indicator even larger for the more damage that you're taking or blocking so you know how big of a mistake that you've just made. When it comes to the battle events, I have everything turned on. Uh, whenever something happens in the game and I need to see what happened, I like to look at the battle events to make sure that I'm keeping track of everything that's going on. Um, sometimes you may want to turn this off if it gets a little cluttered, such as the stun of two plus vehicles that may be less than useful but i like to keep this all turned on because i like to reference at least a little list of immediate notifications in case i need to know something that i may have missed in the heat of battle when it comes to the log i always like to make sure that i have blocked damage and assist and stun on there um, i do not have the events split because I have a mod that does separate damage panels. If you aren't running any mods, I would actually recommend selecting the receive damage at the top so that you can see more clearly the damage you've received versus the damage you've been doing. When it comes to the border type, I would say this is more personal preference than anything. I would just make sure that whatever border type you select, it is going to be obvious to you in game when you are hitting that red line. When it comes to the personal mission progress tab, I have mine set to standard because sometimes I'd like to know how much progress I'm making in a battle. I think this is one of the best things they've added to the game so that it's more clear to you whether you've achieved the mission that you've been going for or not. Again, this is definitely a personal preference. So that concludes our settings. If you enjoyed the video and like to see more like it, please consider liking, subscribing to the channel. If you have a more specific question or are looking for some more general advice, you can always stop over to my Twitch channel. I do stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday evening, so I invite you to come on by. Well, that'll do it for this video. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. A good setting to have. If alpha gun and I'm coming up alpha gun and I'm coming up against you know a, another tier 7